Hello, welcome everyone. Bienvenidos, welcome. Hello everyone, welcome everyone. Hello, hello. Good morning, bienvenidos, welcome everyone. Good morning, good morning. Hello everyone, good morning. I know that most of you have been up for four hours already. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Hello, Just letting people settle in. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias, buenos dias, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Okay, the numbers are still ticking, so I'm just making sure people are getting settled in so we can get started. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Okay, I think we're at a stable number, almost close to 100. I see the numbers not going as rapidly as before. Um, one quick question. I know, Sandra, uh, I should have asked you this in housekeeping, uh, but are you on a laptop, Sandra? I am. Okay, Sandra, um, I only ask apologies because Izzy is out today and I wanted to make sure we can activate translation. Um, I gave you the rights to activate the translation. Um, can you verify if that works? Yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as always, Eva Bermuda Zimmerman here. We have uh, today a very exciting speaker uh, talking about free uh, resources for providers. Um, and the, the key word here, as she told me and reminded me, is free. <laughs> so before we get started, just going to do some housekeeping and then introduce our speaker uh, and, of course, open it up to Q&A. Uh, for um, any questions that you might have in regards to the resources that are about to be presented. So uh, Eva Bermuda Zimmerman here of Early Care Connection. We are, are um, also here with Meryl Gay, um, our esteemed guest panelist and uh, resident expert here. Uh, for today, um, Izzy Greenberg is not hosting. Uh, she needed a day off after three years of doing this continuously. Everyone deserves a day off. So a please reminder that you have to turn on and activate your language settings. If you're an English speaker, please go ahead and select English on your interpretation um, on your screen. If you're a Spanish speaker, please select Spanish. Si deseas escuchar este webinar en español, por favor vete a la pantalla ahora mismo. Escoge en la opción de la caja de herramientas interpretación y después escoge ESP para español. Si en algún momento tienes alguna confusión o necesitas ayuda, por favor vete en el chat y puedes escribirnos un mensaje para tratar de ayudarte con la información. If at any point in this uh, conversation you need troubleshooting or you have some questions, then you can use the chat. If you want to say good morning, or make a comment, uh, then use the chat. But if you have a question, a question for our panelists, we please ask you to use the Q&A. The Q&A allows us to, in live time, uh, make sure that we're going in order with the questions that folks have for us. So please remember to use the Q&A for any questions that you might have. We might answer them uh, in live vocally, or we might answer them live written down. Uh, use the chat for just conversations with each other, maybe links or information that you want to share. We'll be definitely sharing our um, links from this presentation and information in the chat. So also keep an eye out there uh, so that you're not missing any important um, links or details of how to access uh, the resources that we're going to be highlighting today. 
Okay, so let's get started here. Our early care connection guest for today is Alison Gachet Malkinvin. Uh, she is from Waterford Organization. They have 40 years of experience uh, working with literacy and making sure that you know everyone has access to literacy serving more than 270,000 children. Uh, this is an organization that's nationwide and we are so honored and so excited to have Allison on to explain more about the organization and the different free resources that they have accessible uh, right now. Um, and I will slow down because I'm going a little bit fast there. Uh, Allison, I'll pass it over to you to give more, uh, more details on your introduction. And of course, uh, jump right into our, the presentation you have for us today. I will put a disclaimer here out loud that today's presentation is top heavy on slides. So if oh, you no. are with the, no, 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 <laughs> oh, okay. no just a couple of videos. Just a couple of videos. So, so yeah. uh, just a couple of videos. So if you are with the little ones and you want to see the videos and you have the, a few seconds to get away to see the videos. Awesome. If not, our webinars are always recorded and always sent uh, out to everyone to see. So maybe you can watch those videos later or visit the links that we have on the chat. Allison, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> and thank you, Meryl, Eva, Sandra, um, for inviting me in what you do. It's really incredible. And thank you everyone to, for taking time out of your Monday um, to listen and hear. So as Eva said, um, we're a national nonprofit. We've been around for 40 years. And <clears throat> the whole premise of the company was that we needed to engage technology and adaptive learning to help parents and teachers um, give every child a chance at equity in education. That we know children learn at different paces and in different ways. So um, starting 40 years ago, we designed, uh, not we, I wasn't around then, but um, an adaptive program that goes at the child's own pace. So we start with um, really the fundamentals, the large letter alphabet, the small letters, um, phonics, we're all based in the science of reading, which is the proven method of how children learn to read and very phonics focused. And we're always data driven. So we've been selling um, a product to schools for kindergarten, first and second grade for many, many years. For 17 years, um, Pearson, the textbook company sold our product. Um, and for 15 years, we've been separately serving the pre-K market children in the year before kindergarten. So in Connecticut right now, I know that's sort of three and three quarters and changing. Um, and we will support children that are staying back. So some can even be six, but anyway, it's the year they have to be in the year before kindergarten. So the program is adaptive. It goes at the child's own pace and it's designed to be 15 minutes a day, Monday to Friday, but it doesn't matter the day it's on demand, whatever time of day. Um, for literacy, pre-literacy, and then 15 minutes a day for math science. And the math science part is really great also. Um, so we have for 15 years provided it for families in the home to also elevate the family because um, we'll provide a free laptop along with the adaptive program. And we can also in the home, we can also set up accounts for siblings or parents or grandparents to also use our program at their own pace separately um, because we saw a lot of family members using the child's account and then the sequencing of the child's adaptive learning would get off track. So we have a family with 10 accounts and that's also all free. Um, so I'm talking to you about the family product because that was sort of our origin in the pre-K market. Um, What's exciting is that now for the first summer ever or the first fall ever, um, we're also offering a program to childcare providers. Again, also for free. Um, this is our second year in Connecticut, but first year providing um, the program for childcare providers. So for all of you on the phone, there's really three um, ways you could use our program. And again, all free. One is to tell your families about it and then as soon as a family registers, which takes about 10 minutes, um, we take it from there. We ship them a laptop. We do the technical training. If they don't have internet, we can set it up. Um, if they don't have an email, they can call the phone number and we can register on the phone and we can set up an email for them. And then 
they get a family coach that calls twice a week, and that can be done in 135 languages, um, who just guides the adult, but the child does the program. So that's one way that you can provide this as a free resource to the families of the children that you have in your home or center. The other way, and obviously the focus of this call, is that we would love to work with you as child care providers. And that could be someone who has, you know, three or four pre-K children in their home, or it could be, you know, hundreds in a Head Start program. So in that case, we will also provide um, a free laptop, but the ratio is more like one laptop to about five kids. We'll work with you if there's other needs, but because we have years of experience, decades actually, in schools, um, we can also be helpful in, in what that looks like, but usually it's a station um, where the kids ro rotate through. They could do the 15 minutes of pre-literacy separate from the 15 minutes of math science, or they could do a 30 minute block. And we've actually heard from a lot of kindergarten teachers that um, children being able to do an activity for 30 minutes is sort of one of the skills they've been seeking and that really help when they the kids arrive at kindergarten. So the 30 minutes, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. It works pretty well. And actually our founder, the founder of the nonprofit son did his PhD in dose response, like a pharmaceutical company in what's too much little, too much time, what's too little time and what's just right. So for sort of the four-ish age range, there's a lot of data showing that 30 minutes, you know, 15 to 30 minutes is optimal for their attention, their learning um, and their retention of the information. So again, we um, it's interactive. There's a mix of songs, stories, lessons, tracing the letter with your finger. Um, and then we have a lot of resources for the children and also for you, the provider. We have over 300 books on um, PDF. So you could also download them onto a phone. Some of them are read to me stories. Some are in Spanish. Um, where the voice reads the story and sometimes the children can pick the voice like the birdie voice or the squirrel voice or the fox voice. And we have lots of um, activities and um, examples or ideas for activities based on the letter A or the number five. So we have um, tons of downloadable or you can just use them online, sort of lesson plans and resources that are also available. But Obviously, the most um, exciting part is the adaptive learning because the children really um, pick it up fast. You know, in four weeks, we start to see um, them really get the, the sounds of the letters, the phonics. And we hear stories that they walk around the house going to ta ta table, cha 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 chair. So um, it's great for caregivers and families to see um, how quickly the children are learning. And as I say, we're all science based and data-driven. So our program is constantly um, looked at by outside um, consultants and we have longitudinal studies. We're in the US government What Works Clearinghouse because we've have in, we've have proven data from a longitudinal study showing that it works and we get good results. It's 98% correlated with the Connecticut curriculum. Um, so we make sure in each state that we're teaching the things that um, the state wants the children to learn, and that's up through second grade. And since we do have a program for schools up through second grade, and it is adaptive, if a child is way advanced, they're also not going to get bored because it will just keep going um, at whatever their level is. And if they're struggling, it doesn't move on until they get whatever, the letter K. Um, so it, they won't feel bored because it will loop them around into different types of activities and lessons um, until they are solid on it and sort of move on to the next level. So one of the things, so I'll just go back. I said there were three options. So um, the first option is that you all could just share this information with your families and they could sign up or not. Um, the second is that you could sign up as a child care provider for all the pre-K children in your class. And the third is a hybrid, which is you can do both. And if you do both, we can sync the um, program. So if a child does it at home and in your, your center, um, we wouldn't want them to repeat the same lessons. And since it's all adaptive to them and they go at their own pace, we would sync it behind the scenes. So when they do it at home and they'd come into your class, they would just pick up where they left off and vice versa. 
Um, so the hybrid of doing it both in home and in school is also great. And we have no problem giving the families a laptop and also giving your center kind of one to one laptop to five children. So any of those ways um, is our ways we'd love to work with you. The program, and then I'm gonna show a video that's under three minutes just of what the program looks like, but I just wanna talk about the registration process because that's often tricky. And we're sorry, we wanna make it easy, but because we ship laptops, there's certain information we have to gain. So we have, I also have in the chat, the link to a dashboard that has four videos. One of them is how to register in English on a phone. One of them is how to register in English on a computer. One is how to do so on a phone in Spanish and how to do so on a computer in Spanish. So hopefully you could look at that, pause it, and then do that step. And it's pretty straightforward. The link to register for both families and childcare providers is the same. And it starts off the same with one child's information. And then about four screens in, it says, are you registering as a family or as a child care provider? And so if you're registering as a child care provider, you then click that and you'd register with your center's address. And then um, each child, you have to fill in their name and then sort of click add a child. So that's great for up to about 15 kids where you just add a child, do the next kid's information, add a child. And the video, the how-to videos that I've attached in the link show how to do that. Um, they are on a dashboard, but if in the dashboard you click share, you get a YouTube link. So if you want a translation or subtitles on the video in any other language, um, that can be done with the YouTube link of the videos. If you have a child <clears throat> care center with a lot more children, and so it's tedious to type in each child and hit add a child, we would be happy to work with you and send you a secure link where you can um, upload a spreadsheet of children. And it will work the same way. It's just, we have to go through a different area of our company to do so, but we do have experience doing that with refugee agencies and with schools. Um, so it's no problem. We have secure child data trained people um, and are happy to do that. So you just need to let um, us know and we can get a secure link sent to you. So before I go any further, I just wanna show um, this quick video. Let's see if I can share my screen um, to give you an idea of what the program looks like. Obviously it's just a, a few activities, examples. We can see your screen, Allison. Oh, great, thank you. So here, this is where you would go for the, uh, to register. And when you are, oops, sorry, did that just switch? On this page um, where that's where you start, whether childcare provider or family. And it's also, if you um, click Espanol, it's also in Spanish. And again, any other language we can do over the phone with a live translator. But I'm just gonna show this quick video of the program. Uh, we can't hear the audio. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Uh, I can I can try. It's on your direct website, right? Oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, no worries. Um, I'm just gonna try on my screen sharing it to see if that changes things. Uh, so let's try that. Sorry, it worked when I tried it last night. <laughs> no worries. The video worked, the volume, we couldn't hear it. Okay. okay. So let's Who is waterford.org? are an education nonprofit who believes every child deserves equitable access to high quality early learning. How old are you, Ella? Four. How do you do, how many is that? 
One, two, three, four. And she's getting so good at math now, she's getting so quick at it, it's, uh, it's kind of fun to watch. What is Waterford Upstart? Waterford Upstart is an early learning program used in the home to prepare a child for school. The lessons are interactive and provide your child a personalized experience in reading, math, and science that's done in just minutes a day. Two. Three. Four. What are parents saying about it? I think it's wonderful. Oh, start making it up time for your kids. It's amazing at how he's picked it up. He couldn't verbally spell his name before he started, and they did some working with names, but not a lot. And two weeks in, he was walking around going, spelling his name. Yes, I am seeing huge gains in her comprehension. I think it's beneficial to our kids, honestly. Like, it's a great stepping stone for them to have that advancement in school, and it helps the teachers out as well, because then they get these students that already know things that are so basic to them that they can go ahead and advance them even further. What do you get when you sign up? Every family has access to a coach who will walk them through the learning process. I call her my, my BFF, Tiffany. She's unbelievable. She's always available. She calls me once a week and she says, if you feel like you need to call me throughout the week, feel free to do so. Um, the support. That, that, that we get from her, it's, it's, it's uh, really outstanding. Families that qualify also receive a computer and internet access, removing barriers to learning. And all of this is at no cost to you. Honestly, I just didn't think it was real. I was thinking, I kept thinking, okay, what's the catch? To me, it's a one in, in, a, in, a, in a lifetime opportunity. If you sign up to learn, right, we all want to learn. If you sign up to learn, we're going to provide you with the tool to learn on that you can keep for your family. In 21 years, I haven't, I haven't seen that type of program. Best of all, kids love it. <laughs> yeah! I'm so proud of I need All of these happy faces are Waterford graduates, which means they now have the educational foundation to continue learning with confidence. Hope to see my channel again. Bye bye. Register today at waterfordupstart.org. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. That um, was adorable. <laughs> I, I'm so proud of myself. I did my ABCs. <laughs> I know I could watch the little kids dancing all day long, right? Um, but as I say, I think families really. Um, and and teachers really see the results. So um, it can just be, you know, supplemental to what you're doing with them. Um, you also, as childcare providers, um, we have a dashboard, which is the same we have actually for families if they have twins or something, but you can see where each child is in the progress. You know, you can see they're on the letter K. Um, you can see if, you know, all the kids, if you have 12 kids and 10 of them are struggling at a certain place, then you can pull out a lesson on that letter or that sound um, or that number um, or shape or whatever it is. And, you know, use that for the whole class. As I say, there's all, all sorts of resources in terms of activities um, to do with the children for each letter to help um, really cement the knowledge that you could do with a child or with a classroom. But really the beauty of it is, as you say, the adaptive learning so that in a classroom where children are all over the place in terms of their level, um, they can all advance at their own pace. And um, we've had, we were very sort of nerdy and don't make claims unless we have tons of data and studies, but we've seen really great data with children with special needs. Um, because again, it goes at their own pace so they can feel confident and, you know, really work through, as I say, the basics. And because of the way that we teach 
all children benefit. I mean, I have three daughters and one of them's in medical school. And she says she still remembers that she learned to round numbers from the song in the math program from Waterford. So it's, it's super um, memorable because a lot of it's catchy songs and characters. We have characters in the lessons. There's also a lot of social emotional learning built in, which of course is age appropriate. So for the Upstart pre-K program, there's a lot about sharing, about recycling, um, about you know being a good neighbor, sort of the things that hopefully the children would learn both at home and at nursery school or, or in daycare. Um, and there it's all part of the fun. So um, it's probably not quite as fun as you know video games, um, but it's it's as fun as it can be given our data to make sure the children learn the material. Um, so the family coaches I mentioned before, and you saw in the video, a dad talking about his family coach being his BFF. So as childcare providers, we also will have coaches available. Um, <clears throat> they can help you with all sorts of things like what would be a good activity if you're stuck or if one child's struggling, you know, some helpful hints about what to be done. You don't need to take advantage of that, um, but we're happy to offer it and find it often helps. Again, we use a third party translator. So we have coaches that are English speaking and Spanish speaking, but any other language we loop in a live translator. Um, so that's worked pretty well. And, and it's a great part of the program to have that support. So again, as a childcare provider, each child will go at their own pace but you'll have a, a dashboard seeing where they all are. And that's broken down into the, I think five um, sort of like letter recognition, phonics, um, fluency, comprehension, so that you, and you'll see little, there's bar graphs on all of those. So you really get an idea as they progress through the year of the progress they're making, where they're stuck. And, you know, hopefully that helps um, you know what, all the kids are doing or where you see a bunch of them are struggling on certain things um, or certain kids that are, you know, way ahead or struggling um, compared to the rest of the class where you can spend extra time. So we, we've been doing this for a long time. We have um, a lot of outside studies because we do have a bunch of federal grants in five states were funded by the federal government. In another handful of states were funded by state governments like New Hampshire, it's the State Department of Ed that pays for all pre-K children. Um, and in Connecticut, it's funded by philanthropists. So we're pretty flexible in um, Connecticut because of that, which is great. Um, and we would just love to, to work with all of you. So I think that's just about my 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm watching got... the clock. We've got a, a lot of questions. Okay, great. <laughs> questions. I love that. Okay. Uh, so let's kick us off. Ru uh, Problevo, I guess, as the most uh, most poignant question here, how do you get access? Again, um, so she asked for the link. I put the link in the chat, but can you give us again a little recap of how do you get access to these wonderful resources? Yes, so we you have to have a child the year before kindergarten, either as a parent or guardian or as a childcare provider, and you have to register for the program. So the page I showed, which is the link to waterford.org, if you just go waterford.org and then click register for Upstart, and the whole website is also in Spanish. So I think in the it looks a little differently on the phone than on a computer, but if you click Espanol, um, then all the registration words will also be in Spanish. Um, and so you have to start by putting in a child's information in your own, and then it goes to a next screen. It's about 12 screens of information. A lot of the demographic information that we ask is optional. So at the bottom of the page, it says prefer not to answer. And that's also true on gender. Um, and the, the dashboard that I included in the chat has the four videos of how to, one in English and one in Spanish for either computer or phone, because it's the same it's the same website link, but it does look a little bit differently on the phone. Um, and then there's also a PowerPoint presentation that goes slide by slide on how to register. So hopefully there, um, and there's also, once you start the registration process, there is a chat in the registration process that you can use um, if you have questions. And on the website, there's also a phone number. Um, it's not 24 seven, but um, it's mountain time. So it goes till about 8 p.m. at night. And we have a little Saturday coverage 
Um, and then there's also um, the the website. And if you have questions about how to register a hundred kids or something like that, I put my personal email um, in the chat as well. And please just let me know you heard about it on this call and what your question is, and I'll get you to the right um, person at the company to help. Does awesome. that answer the question? So do you have to uh, register? We do have some other free resources, um, which I can't multitask because I have to find the links, but we do have a biweekly email boost Monday and Friday that just has one letters, lesson and song um, and some things like that. But the hopefully you'll register the children for the program and they'll do it regularly because that's it doesn't work unless they do it. If they do well, it, it works really well. What we could do, Allison, at the end when we're done with Q&A and I go into announcements, um, mm -hmm. you, you'll have some minutes there to grab any links that maybe you want to add um, and then share if everyone. If okay. That, if Okay. But as I say, um, the link for the dashboard on the how-to videos is in the chat also. Okay. So, and as I say, if you want to see those in a different language, if you just click on the video, like it's clear which ones are Spanish and which ones are English, but for any of them, if you just click on it and then click share, it gives you a YouTube link. And then with the YouTube link, you can turn on subtitles in any language. Um, so that hopefully that will help. Awesome. Anonymous is asking, how do they get access to a physical copy uh, rather than just digital? Is there a physical copy available for the resources? No. I mean, there's some exceptions. We have some books. Like if I, I'm going to be at Norwalk uh, National Night Out on Tuesday night and I'll have some little um, paperback books. But in general, um, we have for many years also had books, but with between COVID and trying to um, give access to everybody, we found that online um, is, is the best way to make it accessible for, for all. So unfortunately you can, a lot of them are in PDFs. So you could easily print out um, a lot of the activity sheets, our monthly calendar of activities and the books. It's very easy to print and everything, we're happy to share everything. So it's really easy to do so, but really the key to what we're offering is the adaptive software so that it only works with software because it sees where the child's struggling. And then um, the sequencing of the program takes them to the next lesson of, that's appropriate for where they are and how they responded to that. Mm -hmm. activity. I'm going to dig a little deeper on that. Um, obviously the person was anonymous, so I'm, I'm not able to really ask follow-up questions as to why they ask if there's a physical copy. But one assumption here that might bring us to why they asked that question is, if a provider is just not too familiar just now with their computer skills and might be a little concerned as to how difficult it is to get on the software, um, is there tutorials for the provider on how to set up the software and how to open the program? Yes. So when we, um, if they don't need laptops, then we can do sort of technical support over the phone and send, but typically... Once you register, you get a confirmation email and then, um, and it, the timing depends a little bit, but typically when we ship the laptop, there's a paper page taped to it of instruction of sort of how to open it up and put in your code and set up the account. And it's pretty straightforward. Once the um, provider or parent or guardian sets up the account, it's, it's made for four-year-olds to click on their um, account and go. Um, so simple. We, we do have a training video um, that walks through also the curriculum and you know why it makes sense to make sure your children do this and the benefits, um, but also the logistics of how to. And as I say, the support number is, is pretty much available if one has questions and the, the coaches also. So we have a lot, of, it sort of depends what the question is, but we are happy, as I say, also with a translator online in 135 languages to um, walk someone through how to open up the laptop and get started. And the laptops uh, can be used for other things. I mean, this is a big program and they're typically Dell laptops or tablets, they're new. Um, and so sometimes it's, I think you can't load like uh, Microsoft Word on it for some reason, but you can use it for other purposes the rest of the day. It's yours to keep um, and use. So as long as, I mean, the goal is to have the children do it, yeah. um, but you can use the computer the rest of the time yourself. That's one of the questions I had. Um, 
you you've mentioned it's yours to keep as a provider forever yep <laughs> okay you heard yep. it providers this is a fully free laptop in addition to awesome services okay very cool uh yep. Meg, i will i will say I until last it. year we took them back if there wasn't the the usage um but we just found that that was an extra stress especially during covid that um families didn't need and so now we we understand that you know if it's helpful we're a nonprofit so we want to help we don't always do everything right but we're really trying and um so that seemed like an easy thing to not stress people out with okay awesome meg formica wanted to clarify that here in connecticut there is an early learning standards for um, literacy curriculum, we have ELDS and assessment in DOTS. I'm assuming, Allison, when you said that you're Connecticut compliant with the curriculum, it's for school for reading um, curriculum, if you can uh, uh, expand on that. Yes, that's really out of my pay grade. And I don't want to say something that's incorrect, but I think I sent um, you and Meryl the document that aligns us with the Connecticut curriculum. And I can tell you that on a national basis, our content team, um, because we sell to schools, is super on each state's differences. And as I say, everything in terms of how we teach and what we teach is based in the science reading and data and proven, which is how we would never have gotten into the US government what works clearinghouse um, without that. And then we also have outside advisory teams looking at you know cultural awareness and um, different you know, English language learners, all different angles of how children learn, um, what they should be learning, in what order, in what um, sequence, in what depth. Um, so yes, we are. We also, we don't have it out yet, um, but very soon we're going to have a new testing tool. We've also, with schools for many years, done um, assessment. So we're, you know, as I say, we're super data driven. So we're focused on what works, what's proven, and that needs to be aligned with standards. And you can so see I, on the I website, think... there's a lot of information about our Dibble scores. On average, um, our data after five-year longitudinal studies shows that nationally, if a child does our program 15 minutes a day for the pre-literacy, the year before kindergarten, they enter kindergarten on average at the first grade reading level. So I think what Meg was saying is that we don't have a curriculum, we have a set of standards. So mm -hmm. you've aligned with the standards. There isn't a preschool curriculum that the state has adopted. That's just the. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, for the pre-K program, it's, you know, we start with the A, the capital letters. So we're not, you know, <laughs> we don't get too much into curriculum issues until a little later with the school product. But because here we're really, you know, the ABCs, um, then phonics, and then on the math science, obviously it's numbers, shapes you know, little shapes of the moon, things like that, days of the week, calendars, um, what you all are probably doing as great childcare providers. Anyway, we're just here to supplement it and help individualize it for each child. Uh, just a quick reminder for everyone, anyone who has a question either live or you wanna put it into the Q&A, please use the Q&A or raise your hand. Uh, we have a long list of questions here and I don't wanna go out of order. I see that there's a couple questions in the chat. And when you put a question in the chat because there's so much information uh, going back and forth, we don't want it to get lost. Um, so going back to the order of questions here because they're all timestamped and you can see in live time that I'm, I'm following the order guys. Uh, Rhonda Knowles. I only have one child uh, that is four. I have a few that are three and a half years old. The others are two and a half. We have a mixed um, age group. Does this disqualify me from participating in the program? Mm. Well, the three something, it depends if they would be eligible for kindergarten next year. And I know next year the date changes, but is I think there's a You're grandfathered next. window. So... So I don't want to answer that in terms of the Connecticut laws, if because I had two daughters who right now would have been three, but they were, they turned four in the fall, who would have been eligible. So if the three year olds are old three year olds and are eligible for kindergarten next year, then they totally qualify. Um, as a one child, their parent can totally get a laptop in the program for free, and I would just have to look at how we would do that. Um, 
my guess is we can probably work it out, but it it would be outside of um, our typical criteria. Um, so why don't you, if you're willing to shoot me an email at the email in the chat and just restate, and if it's in Spanish, that's fine, um, what your situation is and let me get back to you. Awesome. Uh, anonymous, if I register my daycare, uh, can parents also sign up for themselves at a later time? So basically simultaneously, could you have a parent and a provider on the, in, you know, in the program? Yes. So hopefully not at a later time because we really go by the serve the school year. But as I mentioned, we'd love for the parents to also sign up. We're happy to give them a laptop if they need it. And we can sync the program. So if the child does it at home and in your classroom, um, we can sync where they are in the adaptive program so they don't waste any time. And yes, we're happy to um, do both. And do I re remember that you would like to get everybody registered before the end of August so you can get laptops out? Yes, exactly. That is our deadline. And someone um, asked, you know, if they register their class and then they have two kids arrive late in September, can we add them? And of course, like it's a, it's a pretty hard deadline because as you say, we do try to run by the school year, but we understand that sometimes kids show up late or move to town. Um, so especially in September, I mean, if someone comes in January, February, <clears throat> we can see what we can do, but then, you know, we go on our program. It works if they use it, um, but we do, it is designed for sort of the year before kindergarten. Um, but as they say, totally, if someone, you have a late entrant and your class is already registered um, in September or, or early October, we can totally add them in. Do you have a cap for how many laptops um, you ship out to any given state? Uh, it totally depends. It's, as I say, some, um, some are state funded and they have a cap. Um, some are federally funded and they have a cap. In Connecticut, we do have a number, but we really want um, to help families and childcare providers in Connecticut. So um, we should be able to expand that if we get the interest, but that's also why it's important to sign up soon. Because if, so if, first, if first it's come. after August 31st, then it's gonna be very hard too. Okay, first come, first serve uh, providers you have until August 31st to really get on this and they ship you a laptop. Okay, let's go back to some more questions. And for, Mar for providers, yeah, just it, it's about one laptop to five kids. So if you have four kids, you'll get one laptop. If you have 12, you'll probably get two. <laughs> but, you know, and if there's some, you know, extraneous situation, again, we're, we're trying to help, um, but it is a big operation. So we just need to know what your situation is and what you and need. And then going back to Rhonda's question, if you have three kids, that definitely qualify. And then you have two kids that are like on the cusp, then that's a conversation to have with one of the specialists, right? Exactly. Okay, awesome. So let's go back to some questions there. Meryl, did you have a question while I keep looking here? Um, I saw questions about uh, whether this was available for um, uh, particular towns or statewide. And my understanding is it's statewide, correct? Statewide, yes. And in fact, um, we've been focusing on sort of urban areas, but um, for our summer learning program and last year, I think we had one child in every county, at least one child in every county in Connecticut and people tell their sister or their cousin. And so there's places where I've never spoken to anyone and there's just 10 kids registered. So um, because it's all in the cloud and accessible, and because we ship laptops nationally, it doesn't matter to us at all where people are. And okay. we are, I, I should mention, and I'm not sure it's an issue for childcare providers, but if it's an issue for families, um, we have seen lots of communities where two families live in one house and the Comcast or whoever the provider is literally won't give a second internet um, access. And so if the families aren't willing to share, one family just can't get internet access at home. So we can also set up satellites and um, send a thing, whatever it is, um, that enables them to connect. And we've done that in a lot of places. So again, we just need to know what the barriers are and we will try to work with you. Awesome. And we've also done that for free. Awesome. Jenny, Jenny wants to know, is there a difference between the activities to be used within an individual child and activities for a whole class? No. Um, 
because it's all adaptive and sequenced, it depends on the child, not where they are. And that was our whole idea is to make it um, not matter. And a lot of the children nationally on our program have no preschool option. We, we have a lot of rural kids that it, they'd have to be on a bus for two hours to get to a preschool. Um, so it's so that everyone has access to um, good, solid, proven ways to learn and can hopefully be kindergarten ready. Um, the activities also, once a child is registered, the activity sheets, the calendars, the books are also accessible to everyone, either a family or a child care provider. The school product is a little different, but that's when schools pay and that's kindergarten through second grade. Awesome. Uh, Yashira says, I'm a home-based provider. Do I sign in as a family garden, a guardian or a child care center? Um, if your only child is your own child, then you should sign in as a family. Um, if you have other children, then you should sign in as a child care provider so that you can you know, add a child, add a child, add a child for however many are in the pre-K year. Okay. Uh, anonymous, is there a time frame for accessibility? I know we just mentioned August 31st, and then we also said if you go past that day, it's going to be difficult. When's the next? So what are your enrollment periods so that they have every year that they, they know it to be ready for this program? What, what is the start and finish? So uh, August 31st, basically. But as I say, you know, if someone says I my kids don't start till September 5th, you know, let me know. We can work. We're, we're pretty generous about deadlines. But as I say, it really helps um, us and also it helps the kids to get started as soon as possible. So we don't have a separate specific window during the year. We try to get everyone on board in the fall and then we separately do do a summer program. So our summer learning path, that registration usually is by June 15th. And then that's just a summer program, which is a little more um, condensed. Okay. Um, we have here, uh, do we, Nichelle says, do we as providers register using the same website that the parents use? So assuming yeah. it's a yes. Yeah. So as I say, the, the screen that I showed before I showed the little video um, for the providers, and I'm sorry, it's a little confusing. It's because it's so new, um, but the videos show each screenshot as you go. So if you look at one of the videos, um, the how-to videos, that should really help. You could do that just in parallel on your screen while you register, but you do have to put in, um, your information and a child's um, year <laughs> and your state. Um, and then about four screens in, it will. there's a screen that just says, are you a family or are you a child care provider? And there you wanna check child care provider. And then the address that it asks will be the child care center. Um, and you are the contact. And then it's only when you um, add a child, add a child, add a child that you put the children's information. And as I said, if you have, you know, 50 kids um, in a center and that's really tedious, we can send you a secure link to upload a spreadsheet or whatever. Awesome. We're almost coming down to the end of the questions here. So bear with me. We've got about four more. Um, are there any income restrictions to qualifying for this? Um, in That's by state. And in Connecticut, there are sort of, but it's very generous. It's multiple per hundred percentages of the poverty level. So, um, and for childcare providers, as long as about 60%, I think a lot of the centers in Connecticut go by 75% um, of state median income. So for as long as the, it's not a, a nursery school where everyone's paying 100% and basically wealthy, we should be able to work with you. Okay. Um, we have here. I have a question. If oh. um, if you have a family in a wealthy community that doesn't need a laptop but just wants to use the program, can they create an account and use it? Yep. Yeah, they also have to register, and they just say they don't need a laptop. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And then we do make sure that if it's a really old laptop, I mean, if it's a, you know, it needs to be a laptop. Our program's pretty heavy because there's a lot of animation and a lot of music and a lot of um, stuff behind the sequencing. Um, so, but we do have set tech, you know, technical person would probably just call them and say, does your laptop do this, this, this? And yes, that's great. Okay. And is there an income limit to use the program if you're providing your own laptop? There is, but it's very high. 
Okay. And if, if there's someone in particular that has a question, just let me know and we can, you know, if they don't fit into the, <laughs> the, the guidelines um, and they just want the program, we can certainly set that up. Okay, we've got Anonymous saying, uh, can a kindergarten student continue to use a program, especially if they are lagging behind with their skills? So we do, if someone's held back, so if they've already done pre-K, but they're doing it again and they're old, we, they qualify for sure. Um, if a kid is in kindergarten, not really, um, unless their sibling, if they have a sibling that has the program, then they could have a sibling account. Um, and hopefully in school, they're getting help. And, you know, we're, if their school would like to, to have Waterford, we have some really great ways of structuring um, things that aren't too expensive for schools, but that's really a separate area. Okay. Um, so let me just clear that out. But the sibling account is, is helpful. As I say, we do have kids who are even first, second, third grade, who are siblings of a pre-K child who are using our system. And then we have adults often using it for either literacy or um, to learn English. And we don't advertise as a um, learn English program, but over the years we have had a lot of international schools in other countries use it for English learning because it's like, you know, it would be like a Sesame Street, right? When you learn the letters and the phonics, um, that's a great way to learn a language. That's great, that's great. Uh, this is the next question that I think is really important because some of the providers on this call um, we have a variety of home-based providers running their program, center directors running their program, um, and owner operators. There's a handful of folks here who are not quite the person in, you know, the upper echelon of, of authority in their child care center or child care space. Mm -hmm. And they want to know where they show their director or that supervisor the proof that this program is like, legit. Uh, so they're asking, where do they find the research? Uh, on your website so they can present all this information uh, to that person in, in that you know authority position? Sure, there are lots of links. It's a little hard because there's so much on their website. So again, if someone wants to email me at my personal email, um, I think the things that I sent Meryl, we have um, the data from last summer's summer learning program, which is Connecticut students. Um, we have a lot of other states to show a full year program. This past full year, we've been in Connecticut. We don't have the data yet. It takes us forever. Um, where you can see the Dibble scores with the usage across, across demographics. Um, I also sent the Connecticut Correlation Curriculum, which shows sort of the types of activities we have and what they the teaching goals are. Um, so we have, you know, sort of whatever someone wants to see. Um, we've also won great awards, you know, by foundations that do tons of research. We recently got a check from Mackenzie Scott um, in July. Um, we won the Audacious Award. So there's a TED Talk of one of our executive directors talking about the program. And we were awarded that year in 2019. I think we won the Audacious Award. So we've been very vetted by lots of big um, foundations that do early childhood, uh, both nationally and internationally. And because of our longitudinal studies and showing the Dibble scores, and that even after five years of doing our program in pre-K um, without any other intervention, children are holding an advantage. Um, I'm sure that we can get them comfortable, but you know, just let us know what, what they need. And the web, if they go to the website, there's a lot of information there. There is research. Um, there are the state correlations. As I said, it just takes a lot of digging. So I'm happy to send a few links um, also to the What Works Clearinghouse, the US government, which it just says sort of like, it works. But to get in there, you have to do all sorts of um, data and longitudinal studies and proof. And I'm also happy to talk to any of your directors or um, people like that if they want to just, you know, hear it from someone who's been around for 20 years and lives in Connecticut. We can share, you can share this uh, video as well. <laughs> that's, that's another option, right? So if you're, you're uh, promoting this program to someone who needs authorization or someone who needs to authorize it. And I know some of the, um, our directors on this call are directors of a Y. So, you know, there's other processes in place, but of feel course. free to use this uh, video, um, this webinar, all of our webinars are recorded and um, they're open to, to be shared and, you know, to the public. So that's also an option. Um, and, I'm can I add one thing? 
there? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just so um, depending on where you are in Connecticut, in Stanford, Cradle to Career knows me. They've done an in-person interview and we're on their website, I think. Um, we were in their August newsletter that they sent out as one as their, you know, spotlight community partner um, with a link to register. And if anyone is in Norwalk, the city of Norwalk, Mary Oster, who I know, um, she actually introduced me to Meryl. She's great. She's She knows me. I've stood next to her at tables at many events. And the at City Hall, her office and the human um, services office will help anyone register in person. And they have people on their team who speak um, Spanish and Haitian Creole and I think Albanian and maybe a few other languages who have literally sat with me and registered families at City Hall. So um, they can be super helpful if you're in Norwalk. So and they also, as I say, both of those organizations have seen the results of our program from last year and last summer. And, you know, I think wouldn't be helping us if they didn't believe in it, so. Awesome. Angelica wants to know if there's a specific invitation code she has to write in when registering. Nope, there shouldn't be. Okay, awesome. Uh, Barbara wants to know, how will we know if our center's four-year-olds qualify? Any child who um, is in the pre-K year except if the whole center, as I say, is very wealthy and, you know, full pay should qualify. Okay. So great, Barbara, there you go. Any child in the pre-K year. Um, okay, Pretty much so, any child. Uh, uh, anonymous just registered right now. What happens after you register? So what happens next? So there should be a pink bar that says processing. And then in about an hour, you'll get a confirmation email with um, with next steps. And then that will say how to log into account. Um, then there's, as I say, then there's a training video for a childcare provider for the laptops. We do need um, to connect with you to talk about how many laptops, as I say, we're pretty generous, um, but that is a next step, but it should um, happen pretty quickly. And if you have any questions during the process, feel free to reach out to me or call the number that's on the website. Um, and someone should be able to track it down. But if it says it's it's a big bar that says processing or in Spanish, um, and then it's about an hour before you get a confirmation. It just takes a while to work through our system. Your team is going to get so much demand this morning. They're going to be so busy. <laughs> I hope. They're, they're going to say, Allison, how many people are on that call? <laughs> You're like, a lot, a lot of people. Um, Great. Uh, last question here um, before we wrap it up. Rhonda Knowles uh, will take us away here with the last question. If you have an autistic child that is starting pre-K for in August, uh, could he or she be part of the program? If uh, they're in the school for only two hours a day, um, Rhonda thinks that the child could really ben benefit tremendously for this program. So any info? Yeah. Yeah, so again, that in that case, the family could register or the child care provider. And if they're for, um, that's fine. And yes, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you all the providers for those awesome questions. Uh, remember, remember you heard it here today. You have until August 31st to sign up for a free laptop and amazing re resources with the Waterford organization, uh, Waterford Upstart. Um, we are going to you know, keep Allison here behind the scenes. She's going to add a couple more links in the chat right now while we fi uh, finish up today with some updates. Uh, but Allison, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation, the resources that you're giving the community members here in Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> providers, don't forget to share that, those resources with your parents in your child care spaces. Um, and I want to do a, a really strong and quick shout out to Mary Oster. Mary did connect Allison with our Early Care Connection group. Um, and these kind of connections could never happen if we don't have amazing providers who are telling us of programs like Allison's Waterford Upstart. So Allison, um, we hope to hear from you again. You know, next time you have any type of due date, please, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> Your energy is delightful. You can see that you're very passionate about what you do and helping providers is something that we prioritize. I'm glad to hear that other organizations are doing the same thing, which is awesome. Thank you, Allison.
Well, thank you all for all you do. And thank you all for this time on your Monday morning. And I will add a, a link or two, but the two key ones are in the chat. So um, thank you so much. Thank you. So providers, uh, reminders of the meetings that are happening in the next few weeks. We have um, next week, we're going to take it off. It's been a busy summer and next week, everyone's preparing for back to school. So we're all need in need a, of a very well-deserved, you know, um, not rest because it's really busy, right? It's more well-deserved uh, reboot here to get ready for that school year, uh, finalize some meetings and conversations that folks have to do. So next Monday, we are off. Uh, the following Monday, we should uh, expect to have a conversation about the Blue Ribbon Panel. Uh, there's a bunch of listening sessions happening in the month of September. There's some key conversations that we want to make sure we have with you all. Uh, so next uh, August 28th is our going to be our next Monday morning call. Let me make sure I got that date. Yep. Uh, August 28th is our next Monday morning call, skipping the 21st. And then come September, we have, like we mentioned before, Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, who's going to be on. We also have confirmed um, a collaboration meeting between the Connecticut Department of Education and OEC uh, talking about a, um, Mara, you gotta, you gotta help me because it's so confusing. I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, it's not a grant, it's their survey, CSDE. Uh, I am still a little vague on this one myself. I know that on September 11th, we've got um, Janice Grundell and the Project 359 coming on to launch what they're calling Grand Rounds, which is borrowed from the medical world, um, where the, all the doctors in a hospital um, gather and do Grand Rounds, where they go visit all the patients and they confer with each other about stuff. This is really about how the state um, uses data to inform early childhood policy. Um, so Allison Logan, who's been working on the project, the Bridgeport Baby Bundle, um, will be presenting the information that they've got. They've just gotten a three-year grant from the Pritzker Foundation to continue their work um, building out the data systems uh, that they've used in um, Bridgeport to show um, the, to demonstrate how far behind Bridgeport children are and the things that can uh, make a difference in catching them up. Um, so that's that's September 11th. And I think we have later in the month, um, uh, a lot of people were getting questions about the audit requirements for the grants that they got from OEC this past year. And I think we've got uh, them lined up for uh, one of those dates as well. We've got a busy September. So guys, it looks between August 28th, um, uh, Blue Ribbon Conversation and the full month of September, every Monday we have a full roster. We rem reminder that we do skip any major holidays, including um, high holidays, uh, but put it on your calendar and we'll, we'll make sure that we continue the weekly announcements of when we're on and who the speakers are. Um, but that's what we got. Um, before we close out, Mara, any last comments here? Um, the other topic that I know a lot of people uh, were interested in is kindergarten age. Um, and we're looking at uh, a week to do a uh, conversation about that and the implications of it. Awesome. Uh, and somewhere in there, probably around one of those other speakers, we'll do updates on what's going on in Congress around the federal budget and funding for childcare. Um, there so far is not any uh, break in the log jam. And unless there is a break, we're headed towards a government, federal government shutdown. Um, so we shall see what's, whether anybody uh, decides they're ready to compromise on anything. Maybe on our September 18th Rosa call, we can you yeah. know, do a combo call. She's okay. uh, probably the person to be able to give us the most firsthand information about all of that. She's in the thicket, right? Um, well, always a pleasure, everyone. Meryl and I are just so happy that you guys continue to keep coming. And, and we're trying to make sure that our team, Liz, uh, Izzy, 
um, our, you know, Mayor and myself are providing you guys with very helpful, informative um, Monday morning calls. And as you might know or haven't heard, we rebranded as the Early Care Connection for many years. Uh, a good handful of you were wondering, what's your name? What do we call you? We've just been calling the Monday morning meeting. So we are officially the Early Care Connection, and we'll see you next Monday. Take care, everyone.